Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, I know I may be a little late uh, jumping on to this particular issue, but I thought I would follow up on some of the uh, some of the questions and concerns I raised when I first started my review of Fallout 3, which I had not yet finished, and it's taken me up until now to actually finish it because I've been working on a lot of other things. So, again, I may be kind of late. The first thing I'd like to do is partially retract my earlier statement about the uselessness of the repair skill. Partially. Yes, uh, there are some very good items later on in the game that you can get that are very good. Uh, like the dart gun, which is invaluable, especially if you want to take out like death claws or some of the tougher monsters in the game. It makes them much slower. Or, uh, if you're a hand-to-hand -hand type of guy, the death claw gauntlet, which is also very good. Also, um, repaired items, when you have a higher, higher level of skill, repaired items do do a great deal of more damage than items that you would normally just pick up off other characters. So in that regard, you guys are right. Repair is very useful. On the other hand, um, I was never hurting for damage that much that I really noticed much of a difference. My guy was a good enough shot. I was getting headshots and criticals pretty much every time I was shooting something. Um, and the weapons I was picking up were pretty good. Also, if you find a pretty good repairman, or like, say, the person at the Brotherhood of Steel who repairs items for you, I was never really hurting for cap so much that I couldn't just pay for it if I really, really had to. So, it kind of balances out. If you really want custom items, you're going to need that repair skill. If you're using stuff that costs a lot to repair, like laser weapons or plasma rifles, yeah, you're going to want some repair because it's a lot cheaper to refix it on your own than to pay for it. The downside to that one, however, is I really found the plasma and laser weapons didn't do that much more damage than just, say, like the Chinese assault rifle or um, the sniper rifle. I found that I, I made it pretty much through the entire game without having to switch to the plasma rifle, and I only did that because I had the skill points to burn. I was at level 20, and I had tons of skill points, so I figured why not go into the energy weapons. I didn't really have to. Um... That said, I am still very positive on Fallout 3, but let me tell you, the last third of it is where it really, really falls apart. I'll tell you why. And yes, um, there are going to be complete and total spoilers for the rest of the game, so if you're, not, if, if you're interested at all in seeing how the story ends, turn it off now. Um, that said, the ending to the story is terrible! I was warned about this. I didn't believe them. I really didn't. I thought people are just notoriously hard to satisfy. I think people always say whenever a new game comes out, yeah, it's okay, but the ending sucks. That's kind of like any game in existence you can kind of say that about. Like, you know, I've heard people say, like, Final Fantasy VII, good game, ending sucks. But uh, just, just any game. But, man, they're right. The, the ending to this game is fucking horrible. Um... I'll, I'll, I'll give you the setup, okay? Uh, basically, the entire plot is set around your father had this project called Project Purity, which is going to purify all the water in the D.C. wasteland and make things generally happy and sunny for everybody. So your mission is to uh, find a Garden of Eden creation kit, plug it into the system, turn on the purifier, and fix all the water. The downside, however, is the chamber with the control panel is flooded with radiation, and so anyone who enters the code is going to die. And there's no cute way to avoid this. You have to go in there, you have to push in the code, and you're going to die. So, uh, it gives you a choice. Either you can do it and sacrifice yourself for the good of all mankind, or you can send the hapless chick who followed you from the Brotherhood of Steel in there, and you can make her do it just by basically telling her, hey, go in there and do it and get me a sandwich when you crawl out, you know, bleeding and swollen from radiation sickness. And she'll do it. Here's, the, here's my problems with that. The first problem with this is I heard somewhere, I, I forget how many endings Bethesda claimed were in Fallout 3. I think it was like 900 or something. You know what? Fuck your 900 endings. There aren't 900 endings to this fucking game, okay? There's about three. No, there's like four. Okay, there's four. There, there's really two choices you make during this game that affects the endings. The first is whether or not you finish the game with good karma or bad karma. The second is whether or not you went in the chamber and died, or whether or not you sent the chick into the chamber and died. 
that's really all that affects the endings. And even then, the endings aren't all that different. Here's what it says if you have good karma. The Wanderer from Vault 101 was a really nice guy, and he helped everyone he saw. If you had bad karma, it says, The Wanderer from Vault 101 was a complete and utter asshole, and he killed everyone he saw. Vice, greed, and jealousy, blah, 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 blah. If you went in, it says, The Wanderer from Vault 101 had many good virtues, but the number one virtue that made him the bestest guy in the world was sacrifice. He sacrificed himself for the good of all mankind. If you sent the chick in, it said, The Wanderer from Vault 101 was missing many virtues, but the one he was missing most of all was sacrifice because he was a big cowardly pussy and sent a woman in to do his job. Humanity suffered, blah, 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 blah. That's the entire ending. It's just it's just some combination of those two choices. I don't know where you get 900 endings from. Maybe it's like those little still images that flash across the screen as it's going on. Maybe it shows people you helped or maybe it shows people you kill. But that doesn't count. That's not a separate ending. You know, in the other Fallout games, it would go through, like, every town you went to and described what impact you had on that town. And I mean, like, seriously, every town. That's kind of why I spent so much time just wandering around the wasteland doing good deeds and, and helping people, was I thought maybe it would kind of go through the city and, te and, and tell you, like, Harold the Tree was killed at my hand, and the people ran off and were desolate, and, and they turned into bloodthirsty scavengers. I wanted to see that! I wanted to see the follow-up on all those people I screwed over on my time through the wasteland, and it didn't give me that. It was just terrible! Are you seriously telling me, you know, in this day and age, with with the, as much space on that fucking DVD as they had, they couldn't just record, like, a line or two lines about the individual quests that you finished? We couldn't do that. The second thing is, even if you cared enough about the ending to get one or the other, and really all you need to do to see the other endings is to, like, just reload. But anyway, even if you cared... The ending doesn't make any sense anyway, because at that point you have like three alternatives it seems like the game didn't even think of. Okay, here's the situation. You're going into this chamber with radiation, you have to punch in a code. Here, The, the problem is, not 20 minutes ago in that game, I had just picked up a super mutant partner named Fox, whose, whose sole defining characteristic was that he was able to go into a highly irradiated room and go get something for me and bring it back. I brought him along almost specifically for that reason, and I was like, can't I send the super mutant in there to punch the code in for me? So I asked him. I said, would you go in that room and punch in the code for me? I don't want to die. This is what the guy said. He's like, I, um, uh, this is your destiny, and I, uh, I don't want to interfere with that. Uh, basically the writers wrote themselves into a corner and they didn't think of that ending until much later in playtesting. Yeah. Why can't I send Fox in? Why wouldn't he go? Why wouldn't he go if I told him to? It's not gonna hurt him. What if you had a robot? And by the way, you can get a robot. Why can't the robot punch the code in? <laughs> okay. The other thing is, there's no boss to this game. And there are bosses in Fallout. There aren't that many of them, and in fact, I think a lot of the Fallout games kind of missed the boat on the chance to include various mini-bosses, like the, the, uh, the Mole Rat God. You know, not much of a mini-boss, but it was a mini-boss. It was cool. I liked watching the rat run around and talk smack to you. But there are basically no bosses in this game. And, you know, for a setting that allows basically anything to occur because of radioactive mutation... There are shockingly few opportunities used to include some gigantic fucking mutant or like a giant robot to fight. And there are there are opportunities. They're all over the place. You're telling me, you know, that actually okay, there is one, that gigantic mutant that you fight in front of the, the radio station. That was a good fight. Why couldn't we have more of that? I saved all those mini-nukes from that game thinking they would come into play later against some gigantic boss. I saved all of these mines. I saved all of these grenades and super weapons thinking I would use them farther on down the line against some gigantic monstrosity. And I didn't. 
why couldn't we see more of the giant mutants? Why couldn't we fight some gigantic robot? There were chances we could fight a giant tree. We could have fought that. We could have fought uh, that, you know, that Brotherhood of Steel robot that wanders through? That was like the biggest waste of time. It, it's like watching somebody play a video game at that point. You, you're just following this robot, and watching it blow stuff up is kind of cool, but you're thinking, like, why can't I drive the robot? Am I really doing anything to protect this robot from, from the other character shooting at it? I didn't really feel like I was doing anything. It was just kind of just, you know, ten minutes later I followed this robot and finally I got to play the game again. You know, if we had a chance to fight that giant robot, that might have been a really cool scene. If we had a chance to fight some kind of Cthuloid horror in the Dunwich building, that might have been cool. Instead, I got this ghoul mask and all of a sudden half the difficulty of the game is just stripped away. It just seemed like there was a chance for a lot of bosses. The only final boss you fight is Colonel Autumn, and you know what? I killed him in one hit! I shot him in the face with a plasma thrower, and he disintegrated! That's your final boss! You know, that guy talks an awful lot of smack for a guy who's like eight foot tall in giant steel plate mail with hydraulic joints who could probably tear his head off just by just flicking his finger at him. And he's got a laser pistol who's like, I'm going to kill you now, boy, and I... You know, Fallout 2 at least had that gigantic super mutant you had to fight, and he was tough. But, and, and, and why can you not play the game once the ending is played out? I never understood that. You, you take these great pains to construct this gigantic sandbox with tons and tons of quests that are available to you, and then when you finally decide to, to go through the main storyline, all of a sudden it goes, oh, you're done. Yeah, you could reload and go back, but it just seems like a waste of time when it could just as easily throw you back into the wasteland and say, change will take a long time to occur, so keep doing quests for now, and you can just stop whenever you want. The, the other Fallout games did this. You could play the game as much as you wanted, finish other quests, you could kill anyone you wanted to, and it was cool that way. So, I, I guess I guess that's just... I, everyone is dissatisfied with the ending to Fallout 3, and it didn't have to be that way. I think they really could have, if they'd spent a few more minutes just recording some extra dialogue and putting a little more thought into the ending of that, they could have just made it more sensible, like Fox. Why can't you go in there? There's a lot of radiation. I'm immune, but I'm not that immune. Like, I'd be like, alright, it's bullshit, but alright. Or maybe you could make the make the control panel through a hallway that's that's guarded and Fox is like I can't get through there I'm not tough enough there's robots in there and I can't fight them and and I I was just basically at at that stage my speech was a hundred percent and I had put myself in a position where I could talk my way out of anything I talked the enclave into blowing itself up I and that was really easy by the way even though my speech was a hundred percent I was just like Ah, uh, blow yourself up, and the computer's like, I think you're right, that's a good idea, I should really kill myself, just because you said so, and I was like, yes, you should. So, every I even talked the final boss, I, I fought him just because I wanted to fight something before the end. The, even the final boss, I was like, I'm not the Brotherhood of Steel member you're looking for, you should go home now, and he's like, yes, I should go home now. That was the ending. So... I guess that's my my recommendation for Fallout 3 is much weaker than it used to be. Just because if you care about the story, you're going to be vastly disappointed. Um, I still think running around the wasteland, bopping around, killing people, doing quests, that's still a lot of fun. But um, there, there reaches a point when you have basically everything you need. You have all the weapons, all the armor that you're ever going to want. And you should just tackle the storyline, because unless you care about achievement points, and I don't, there's almost no point in running around, because the story doesn't care, so why should you? Anyway, that's Fallout 3. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and have a happy holidays, everyone who celebrates holidays. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to finish up with more Phantasmagoria. There's about, there's, there's two discs left to that game, and I... Don't know how much that translates into in game time, but uh, but we'll see. I'm thinking there's at least about 60 to 80 more minutes of Phantasmagoria to go. So it's going to be a lot of fun seeing how that plays out. Have a good day, everybody. Goodbye.